Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by... For over 30 years, Vanguard Outdoors has made the gear that turns a regular hunt into another fine day of field. We know that a good shooting stick or a nice pair of binoculars can make or break your day. Our design teams include serious hunters who work hard to bring you the best sporting optics, shooting sticks, tripods, bags, and more. We are Vanguard Outdoors. Hello everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. We're so glad you're here. I'm Jenny Silik and we've got a brand new show headed your way this week. I'll spend a morning out on Lake St. Clair chasing after bass and we'll get to know a little bit more about a brand new organization that's changing the way high school bass fishing looks. You won't want to miss that story. And Jimmy and Jordan have some other excitement in store for us this week. Well, that's right, Jenny. We do have a couple more things on this week's show. We're actually going to kick things off above the bridge, one of my favorite places in the state of Michigan, and that is Drummond Island. You won't want to miss that story. We were just there this past weekend, had a ton of fun. We're also going to have room for a recipe on this week's show as well, so you stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger, and it's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, dancing on the pine forest floor. The autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. Great lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988. Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in-store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By Green Mark Equipment. Green Mark Equipment is a John Deere dealership network in southwest Michigan and northern Indiana. Green Mark provides sales and services to farmers, commercial businesses, large property owners, and homeowners. Information about pricing and products available can be found online at greenmarkequipment.com. By Network Outdoors, connecting members to share experiences, help grow businesses, and to give back to the outdoor community. Learn more at one of 10 monthly meetups or online at networkoutdoors.com. Just this past weekend found me in one of my favorite spots, in the Upper Peninsula, heading east on my way to Drummond Island. If you've never been, well, you simply need to go. We were just driving onto the ferry that takes you across the channel and onto the island. The ferry runs back and forth most of the day, so you don't need to wait more than 20 minutes or so, and you're on your way to the island. Now, Drummond doesn't have a true downtown, but it does have a main four corners, and everything you need is here. I had my wife Missy along on this trip, and we were excited to hit the water the first morning of our stay on the island. And there is so much to see here that if you do come, make sure you stay for a few days. Today, we would be tagging along on Ivan Gable's boat and taking his grandkids out, James, Nathan, and Ella. Ivan has fished these waters for years, grew up here on the island, and a better guy and fisherman you will be hard pressed to find. Chase Socia was our first mate today. As we made our way out onto the big water, Ivan ran us through the plan for the day. Well, what's the game plan, Captain? Well, our game plan today is catching fish. Fishing is fun, so we're out on an area that's called the flats. We're going to be working on top of it and off the edge of it. We're going to be anywhere from 90 through 140 foot. Our target is 
species is going to be lake trout with uh, this time of year pink salmon a little bit up higher on occasional Atlantic or King steelhead so we're gonna put out uh, boards riggers gypsies the whole thing the whole ball of wax will be out there to try to take fish so you're kind of up and down the whole water column Yes, sir. Yep, we're going to be uh, anywhere from what 15 through 120, something like okay. that. And mostly spoons or uh, spinners and spinning glows, or, or dodgers and spinning glows, spoons. Uh, there is going to be a squid out with a dodger. Um, pretty much that, you know, just move everything around until okay. we find something that really connects. How's the fishing been over the last few, two, three weeks? Two or three weeks. It was a little slow three weeks, but it's picked up. Uh, everybody out here is doing real well on uh, lake trout and pink salmon. And uh, some of the boats staying inside get an occasional king or one or two. So okay. it's, it's been good for these guys, you know, trying to catch fish. So nobody's going hungry. <laughs> what does the end of August into September look like around here? Uh, it slows down, you know, the kids go back to school. Uh, I'm thinking maybe there'll be more king staging in here. Um, lake trout seems to hold good. The pinks will be up, you know, in the Sioux there in the rapids and stuff. So you, they'll get the humps and the jaw and they'll look gruesome, but they're, they're pretty when they look that way. So same, everything will be moving towards the rapids and the Sioux, you know, that's going to spawn out. So. Well, we were into fish as soon as we set lines. We were maybe four miles out and we had fish hitting most of our setups so far. One thing about this part of the state is just how beautiful it is on your way out. The surrounding islands make this place pretty amazing. Look at that. Nice job, dude. That one's probably the size of a small truck. Well, Missy was up next and she had never been to Drummond Island before or fished on Lake Huron. It's always fun to see things through the eyes of someone new. First Lake Huron fish. Beautiful day out on the water. <laughs> nice job, Captain. You're running over a few. Yeah. You got to get lucky once in a while, right, Jimmy? This <laughs> blind squirrel finds a nut. Yep, you got him. Yep. <laughs> Ivan does like taking kids and new folks out, but to be able to take his grandkids out, well, it was a pretty special day. I think we're doing well. They seem to have caught on to this game. <laughs> they lived and breathed dock fishing, and now I may have some real travelers on the boat. So <laughs> it's always nice to bring kids into this game. It's what's fun. It, what seems to be working for you today? Looks like the downriggers with uh, spinning glows are take. You know, taking the most, uh, the dipsies uh, with uh, a spinning glow on it. Looks like a green green color seems to be the best spinning glow, you know, com combo. James had this nice fish in the boat, and young Nathan had a good one on the line as well. The fish were hitting steady and often so far today. Holy cow! Well, the fish just kept coming today, and this next fish, well, let's just say it was rather tough to handle. Good one. Feels pretty good. I don't know if I've ever seen a fish just about swim over someone's shoulder before, but Missy is a good sport and laughed more than anyone. We were having a ton of fun in a very special place. From your perspective, what makes fishing around Drummond and, and makes Drummond Island so special? It's all about families and getting out in the walk, you know, outdoors. It's all about the outdoors, you know. There's no iPads, there's anything, and the, the adrenaline, the smiles, the 
camaraderie, the competition between, you know, people on the boat, everybody cheering for everybody else. Um, it's all just fun. That's that's the name of the. That's I believe. Fishing is fun. Just period. And, and you uh, grew up here on the island? Yeah, I grew up fishing. That was uh, my pastime. That's what I love to do. So. It was easy to transition over to this, and now just kind of want to share it with everybody. So. Sharing it with everybody is a great way to say just why Ivan loves to run his charters. He says that running a charter fills his passion for fishing and pays for his addiction to keep chasing fish. Well, we knew it was time to head in when the kids started to nod off. We boated a bunch of fish today, mostly Lakers, but we did get four pinks as well. We made our way back to the shelter of the marina where Ivan and Chase made short work of the fish. The plan now was to take the fish to the Northwood Bar for the catch and cook deal that they offer. And let me tell you, the Cajun and fried options, well, they're out of this world. Thanks to Ivan for letting us tag along for a day of family fishing. This sure is a special part of our state. There's still some summer left, so head across the bridge, and there is an island waiting for you right here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Over the years, the popularity in bass fishing has just exploded, especially with young people in high school. There are actually high school bass fishing teams out there now, but there's a couple of guys that saw a need to go even deeper into bass fishing with high school students. We're going to check that out in this next story. Good morning, guys. Morning, morning, everyone. So tell me what's happening this morning, Nick. Well, we're getting ready to uh, hopefully go catch a few fish out here on beautiful Lake St. Clair. It's a perfect morning, not a ripple on the water. It's already hot though, it's like 8.30 and it's like 82 degrees. So it's gonna be a little steamy out there today, but I've got Jack alongside with me. He's one of the anglers, uh, which will fill you in on one of our nonprofit kids fishing programs that we run here in Michigan. So. We'll talk a little bit about that today, hopefully catch some big smallmouth and uh, have, a, have a good morning. So how long have you been fishing for bass, Jack? Uh, I've been doing it for a really long time. My dad had me fishing for ever since I remember, so I've been doing it a long time. So I really love it. It's fun. I just like getting outside. What do you like about bass fishing in particular? I don't know, they're just fun to catch, even though you do it over and over again, I don't know. Every time it's like new and different, I guess. So I like like when you figure them out, you figure out like what they're doing and what you need to do to get them to bite, I think that's like the most fun. It's like a little puzzle. As we headed out to Anchor Bay here on Lake St. Clair, Nick talked about how the idea for New Wave Angler Initiative got started. You know, I fished competitively at Adrian College for, uh, for four years, um, which was awesome. I got to travel all over the country and fish tournaments and meet a bunch of great people. Um, just such a cool experience and I was, I was super fortunate to be able to do that. Um, and in doing that, you know, I, I started to kind of learn more about the industry of bass fishing and, and the needs that, you know, or the things that were missing, I guess, from the industry. Um, and so with that being said, I guess my, my college roommate, Caleb, um, he came up with this idea where, you know, every sport out there, if you're a competitive basketball player, baseball player, hockey, soccer, doesn't matter, there's some sort of high level training that you can, you know, hire for, or oh, we got a little perch, that you can, um, that's what those smallmouth are eating right there. Um, I was saying there's there's some sort of training that you can you know you can do if you want to be a, a competitive college athlete or if you want to go farther in the sport or be one of the best. Um, there's always ways to to improve yourself. There's nothing like that in fishing. So Caleb kind of came up with this idea. He saw this need for a for a training program to teach you know youth anglers um, everything about the sport of bass fishing. 
um, and try and get them college or college scholarships that is um, and get them kind of ingrained into the industry. So six years ago, we started um, the program, which is now called New Wave Angler Initiative. And um, it's a nonprofit 501c3 uh, company that um, basically teaches youth anglers everything there is to know about fishing. We get them on the water like Jack today. He's out here fishing with us. He's one of our anglers in the program. Um, and we pretty much give them all the knowledge that we have and all the tools that you know we can to help them be successful. Um, get scholarships and hopefully stay in the industry. So it's been a really, really cool six years. Um, you know, I've kind of put a lot of other things in my life on hold to do this and um, it's been absolutely worth it. Um, but with that being said, you know, it, it becomes tougher and tougher every year to keep doing it. The sport's very expensive and it's part of the reason why we went nonprofit was to try and um, fundraise money basically for the uh, kids program. So um, that's kind of been our goal this year. 2024 is the first year that we've been a nonprofit, so it's been a learning curve. Um, we're learning a ton about it, and um, you know, hopefully, we're going to keep this thing going and, and continue to grow it every year. Um, reach more anglers every year is, is the goal. Um, we just want to get kids on the water. That's that's the ultimate goal with this thing is to teach youth about fishing and, and get them on the water. So. Um, Jack's a great example of it. He's this is his last year fishing with us. Um, you know he's going to Catholic Central right now. Hopefully, going to continue his fishing career on into college. He plays soccer as well, so maybe he'll do that alongside, which is would be pretty cool. So we'll see what happens uh, in the next year or so here for him. But we're going to continue uh, trying to help people get on the water and get kids involved um, any way we can. So a lot of what we do too with this training stuff. Um, you know, kind of let the kids, there's nothing better than on the water teaching, right? Like I can sit there and tell you till I'm blue in the face about how to do X, Y, and Z with a bait or, or how to do this. But until you go and do it yourself and, and you know, you're on the water, that's the best way to learn. So Jack's running the troll motor right now. He's utilizing something called forward facing sonar. That's basically pinging a, a, I think it's a 12 or 15 degree cone out in front of the boat. Anywhere that trolling motor had points, he's, he's, he has a live image of what's going on so he can see his bait falling to fish he can see the cover that's around everything so this is kind of the new age technology for fishing and um, we've got to get these guys you know as good with it as they can that's how all the big tournaments are being won that's just the way of the world now so um, he's he's scoping around looking for those fish um, you know, probably half the casts that he's making are at a fish normally. So there's nothing better than learning, you know, on the water, in person. Um, that's the best way for these, these, these kids to learn uh, how everything works, so. Jack was getting some great hands-on experience. And after a while, Nick took over and showed him the fine-tuned techniques needed to target smallmouth with forward-facing sonar. Jack has learned lots of valuable lessons about tournament fishing from his coach. Uh, Nick really taught me how to find fish in different lakes, so it's been easier for me to go to like a completely new body of water and be able to find fish all by myself, and I think that's like really fun. And uh, he's taught me a lot of things with techniques and uh, line and everything about fishing, so it's been really helpful. I, I've found it, my dad loves it too because he gets to learn from me now, so that's always fun. Awesome. And you fish for your high school team? I do, yep. I started a club my freshman year and a team as well. So we've been actually growing quite a bit. I think we have like 15 active members now. So it's been a lot of work this summer trying to get everybody on the water, but it's been fun. So. And where is Catholic Center? It's in Nova, in Wixom. Okay, cool. It's truly inspiring to see young people like Jack developing such a passion for the sport and helping to get others involved. That's what Nick and his team hope for with every new angler they mentor. With New Wave Angler, a lot of the kids coming in, um, you know, we kind of work with all levels. So we have three different program levels. Um, you know, one is our, our beginner level, level, basically, where, you know, we're going to get a kid who may not even be in high school yet um, and just, you know, kind of is starting to dabble with the idea of fishing or loves to fish from the bank, has never done a tournament, you know, very little experience, and, and maybe has parents who are going, I don't know the first thing about bass fishing or tournament fishing. I, I have no idea what to even do with this kid. He just loves to be outside. So those are the kids that we, we love to get our hands on because those are, you know, those are kids that are like just getting into this, this world. And so we get to open their eyes to, you know, bass boats and, and heck, Lake St. Clair and all this cool fishing opportunities that are out there that they didn't know about. And so, um, 
those are kind of the, the beginner level, I would say, you know, anywhere from 11, 12 years old, um, even into freshman in high school, we get a lot of kids right in that range. Um, then we get kids like Jack who are kind of already well on their way in the fishing world and, and have a pretty good idea of what's going on and where they want to go with it. Um, those are kind of our elite level guys that we travel nationally with. We'll, we'll go out of state and do national high school tournaments with them. Um, those are the guys we expect to go on to college and get scholarships. And so um, we kind of work with kids from, from all ranges, from beginner level to, you know, as advanced as you can get some of the best high school anglers in the state. You know, right now, Jack and, and his partner, Colin, are ranked uh, third in the Angler of the Year race for the high school series. Um, the top two, I believe it is, go on to nationals. They get a national bid to go fish against all the other top two states um, or teams in every other state, that is. So they're working at it this year. They're, they're a couple points behind, but they're, they're in reach of their goal, which was uh, trying to make top two for Angler of the Year. So um, we work with all skill levels, which is the cool part about this fishing stuff. And, um, you know, you can never get into it too late. So. New Wave Angler Initiative is a great example of our incredible family of outdoors men and women giving back to their sport. Special thanks to Jack Miner and to Nick Marsh and the NWAI team for keeping our outdoor heritage going strong here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, we're here once again in Mount Pleasant, Wood Shop Social, Jim Wood, Chef Extraordinaire, and I believe we have some trout fillets here? We do. What is the plan of attack? What are we doing here, Jim? So we're going to saute the trout and we're going to serve it with a roasted potato salad. So where we roast the potatoes beforehand okay. and then we chill them out so it gives them a, uh, just a different flavor profile. Hmm. And then instead of using just your standard mayonnaise mix, we're actually using ramulade, hmm. which is a sauce we make here in-house. It's mayonnaise, horseradish, um, stone ground mustard, green onions, there's I think 12 things in it. Wow. So it really takes the salad to a different level. Okay. And then we're going to make a quick dill uh, citrus sauce to go over top of it. Okay. Well, let's get started. What are we going to do to these trout fillets here? Take our fish, skin side down, put it in away from us, the oil doesn't hit you. People have a tendency to really overcook fish. Um, some fish is forgiving, you can do it. Other fish, not so much. But I'd say for a, a filet this big, one and a half minutes on each side, top. So you really didn't season that really much at all, just a little bit of salt? Just a little bit of salt, yeah, you don't need to, especially if you're cooking on high heat, you don't want to put pepper on here because pepper has a lot of oil in it and it burns, mm. and it burns fast. And that, that'll make your, your fish bitter. All right, so that's good to go. I'm going to take that right off. So now we're going to add fresh orange juice, fresh lemon juice, a touch of salt, and then we're going to add some butter. Hmm. And we're just going to let that do its thing. Add some dill, fresh dill. Wow. Which goes really good with potato salad. So now you've got those potatoes. Add half cup of cooked egg, half cup raw celery, quarter cup raw onion, of red onion, and a quarter cup of green onion. And then you're going to go in with your ramulade. So the butter citrus sauce is just for the on top of the fish, and then this is alongside. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how much we'll actually put on the fish. We'll probably put a lot, a majority of it around the around the plate, actually. Okay. You've done all that work to make your skin as crispy as you can make it. You start putting sauce on top of it. A lot of times, it's gonna. Okay. This is gonna be skin on sautéed rainbow trout with citrus butter dill sauce and a roasted potato salad. Oh my. Is it good? That's really good. Holy cow, that citrus sauce. Well, it's simple. It's got four ingredients. No reason to get crazy with it.
Thank you so much for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you stick around here coming up as we transition from the summertime into those exciting hunting months coming up real soon. We'll be doing a little more summertime fishing. We'll give you some shooting tips to get ready for hunting season. And if weather permits, we'll take you to the very top of the Mackinac Bridge. If you'd like to see where we are and what we're up to, you can always check us out online. Well, that's right, Jenny. Online is a good way to kind of keep track of us. You can do that through our website, our different social media platforms, as well as YouTube. Make sure you are getting out and enjoying everything our state has to offer. And if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by... Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. By G5 Outdoors, makers of the Quest and Prime bows, manufactured and designed in Memphis, Michigan. G5 offers a line of archery bows, broadheads, and accessories on the web at G5Outdoors.com. Mid-Michigan Ponds has been building and maintaining ponds and lakes throughout Michigan for nearly 25 years. We combine biology and heavy equipment to make pondscapes that are sustainable and fishable. More information at midmichiganponds.com. Closed captioning brought to you by Double D Ranch Foundation, a nonprofit 501c3 foundation working to make hunting and fishing accessible for those with disabilities. When I want to far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. That's where I'm from and I'll show you my hand. Lord above, I love this land, I am a Michigan man. From the Keweenaw down to St. Joe, Kalamazoo, east to Monroe, to St. Marie and back again, I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man, that's where I'm from, and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, I